Hi, this is Michelle Sisler, owner of Keys to Imagination, and today I would like to welcome Karen Koch, the original founder of the Music Educators Marketplace, which is now part of the Keys to Imagination family. Karen has a fantastic video series on how you can easily incorporate music history into your lessons in a meaningful way. Be sure to watch both parts one and two for some great tips on how you can incorporate this in your next lesson. Hi, my name is Karen Koch, and many years ago when I wanted to do a master's thesis, my topic was how to come up with a way of introducing and structuring music history for students so that that would be interesting and useful for them as they advanced in their musical studies. The reason I had done such a poor job up to that point is probably similar to other teachers, and that is, first of all, the subject of music history is so vast, it's hard to know where to start. I came up in my study with four underlying guidelines to use, and I'd like to show, tell you those today, and then I'd like to show you a quick way to introduce this subject of music history that will start your students, at least give them a good little foundation for the future study that they're going to have. The first guideline is when to provide students with a mental filing cabinet into which to place the information. I was just giving them information one little tidbit at a time about Mozart as a child star or Bach having 20 children, but it didn't really resonate with them. They had no place to classify it, to sequence it. That didn't. It was just uh, sort of rattling around in their brain. So one of the things I learned is that they need to have some kind of a way of structuring music history. Second, second guideline is to give them the big picture, that's part of that structure, before giving them the little details, so that when they get the little details, they have a place to put it in mentally. The third uh, guideline is to use ways of appealing to the senses. So we've come up with colors that help students relate to the musical periods. For example, Baroque gold, ornamentation, that's their clue. That music was ornamented, associated with royalty, nobility, and high church. Classical period color is blue. That was much more refined and restrained. The romantic period, red, passionate emotional feelings of whether sadness, longing, love, anger, whatever. The 20th century color is green, and it, we chose that color because green is a combination on the color wheel of yellow and blue, which make green, and so that's what came before. And it's also green is the color of growing things, and certainly the 20th century of music was growing. Now we've limited to those 400, that, those, the, that period of time between 1600 and 2000, um, because we just can't include everything, but this is a place to start. The fourth guideline that I'd like to, to mention is to try to relate the music history information to the experience that the students are having. And probably this doesn't mean that you need to talk about dates very much. The sequencing is probably much more helpful than dates. So now I'd like to show you a quick guideline way to introduce this idea to your students. Take a plain sheet of paper, a half by 11, fold it in half, and then fold it again in half so that you now have, when you open it, four equal sections. Those are going to represent the four musical periods that we just talked about. Have them take a Sharpie pen. They'll just need the paper, a Sharpie pen, and four color markers, with those colors represented. And they take that Sharpie pen, and they are going to create a column for Baroque, one for classical, one for romantic, and one for 20th century. Once they have that, they're going to color code each of those columns. And then they have a little overview of music history 
from into which they can place the information. When you say you're assigning a piece by Mozart, they, you can talk about the classical period, they have a place to put it, they can write their own repertoire in there. It's just a very simple little guide, very quickly oriented and instituted, but it's very helpful as a foundation. There are a lot of ways to carry that out, uh, those color, color schemes, and one of them would be when you're assigning that Mozart piece, uh, take a highlighting pen and just run that color through the composer's name in the student's book, or have them do it when they select uh, the correct color. Just to remind them then when they see that, when they open their book to practice, that's a reminder of the Mozart period. Then they can begin to clap, categorize the Mozart, Clementi, those pieces that sound somewhat similar, and that makes it much easier to talk about. The, um, the last thing I'd like to, to share with you, uh, it, in addition to some other ways of using that color coding, is um, to help them uh, constantly refer to these periods. You can organize your recitals with those color coded periods. Uh, you can have students uh, keep record, they can write the repertoire that they're studying right here if they want to just do an informal thing and keep this in, the, in a binder for themselves. Of course, since uh, that was my study, I came up with a product and it's much more sophisticated than this, but this is a great way to start. And the product that I have is called My Own Music History. It is available from Keys to Imagination and the information, the link is right available here. There is also another product to help students learn music history and to make it more interesting on, for the students and easier for you as the teacher. And that is a product called a game called Composer Chaos created by Sally Ritchie and that is also available on key, at Keys to Imagination. So that information is here. And uh, this, these are just, this is just a simple way of beginning uh, to, to, under, to help students understand something about music history and opening that whole world of interesting stories and uh, interpretations of music and differences that, that will eventually, uh, they will understand and come to enjoy. Karen just mentioned two fantastic resources. Here are two short one minute trailers with more information on these two products. If you've been looking for a way to introduce and structure music history for your students, you might be interested in this. This is a six kits which the students create for themselves by color coding and adding stickers. There are six charts. The first one is the milestones of music history, which includes the timeline of music, music an American history event for each period, a musical term associated with each period, and the best known musician for each period. You notice that there's a color coding. For example, Baroque is gold, ornamentation, royalty, nobility, high church. The second chart is a reference. These fit into the front and back cover of a binder, which is the assignment sheet in my studio. For additional information, you can go to keystoimagination.com. Hi. I'd like to introduce you to the newest Whirly Gig game called Composer Chaos. In this game, students will learn about composers from the Baroque, the Classical, the Romantic, and the 20th century eras. They're going to learn facts about the composers, uh, like their nationality, the era that they composed in. They'll learn things about their lives, they will learn about some of their most famous compositions and the styles of those compositions. To do the game, all they have to do is read the composer card, which contains all the facts, and make sets of other cards that go with it. So they have to keep using that information over and over. The game is easily adapted to whatever time you have available. So it makes learning music history a little more fun. So there you have it, some meaningful ways to easily incorporate music history into lessons. Thanks for sharing, Karen. And thank you for watching.